Hello, Michael here with another Renderman tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at ambient occlusion and how you can assign it to meshes in uh, Renderman uh, in Maya. Now you can use a ambient occlusion in a couple of different ways, um, either on the mesh level or on the um, scene render level uh, using the ambient occlusion in integrator. We're just going to be looking at it on the mesh level though for this tutorial. If you don't know what ambient occlusion is, essentially what it is, is it looks at your model and it increases the darkness in areas where parts of the geometry is closer to other geometry in the scene. So for example, uh, in these cracks, they're going to become a lot darker and the underside of the body where it gets closer to the floor is going to become darker as well. And like things where like the neck is close to the head and that sort of thing. Um, and it's really easy to set up. So I'm going to open up the Hypershade editor and you'll see that I've already got a normal map and a displacement map assigned. It will look at the normal map and displacement map for uh, two create the ambient occlusion not just the base mesh so if you're using a um, if you're using a bump normal or displacement map then it will work still so what i've done here is i've set the color to be um, 0.5 value uh, which is just um, the, the middle point between white and black um, and i've got a little bit of specularity on it i think it's about 0.01 yeah and just a bit of roughness as well to help with the um, edges so to get the uh, ambient occlusion happening, the first thing we do is hit tab and type in PXR blend. I'm going to PXR blend node and I'm just going to hit three on that and run the result RGB into the diffuse color. And then the bottom color I'm going to set to be the 0.5 gray. And I'm going to set the operation to multiply. Then I'm going to hit tab again and type in PXR dirt. And this will give us a dirt node. Now, the reason I'm using a dirt node is because it um, uses ambient occlusion to detect where it should place the dirt. Um, and you usually use this in conjunction with other nodes. So uh, what I'm going to do is run the result RGB into the top RGB. So what this will mean is that the occlusion will multiply by the bottom color, the color that's underneath it. So when we want to um, have areas that appear to be darker, it's going to multiply the black times the, um, times the color underneath it hence making it darker and more detailed. Uh, to do that though, we need to make sure that the occluded color is set to black or a dark color, but generally you're gonna be using black and white, and the unoccluded color is gonna be set to white. So if you are using a multiply, generally you're gonna be set it to black and white. So now if I render that and compare the two, so this is the uh, unoccluded and this is the occluded. So if you look at this area here, for example, there's a lot of detail happening there, and you can see that the detail's brought forward a little bit. And you can see like the shadow area under the chin is getting a lot darker. And generally you're just seeing better definition in the model overall. So it's really good for uh, models like this where there are lots of small details. Um, I specifically modeled this one with, the, with this concept in mind. So um, it's things like this, um, things with lots of tiny little detail, maybe some technology or something like that would be good with this sort of thing as well. Uh, we're not finished though. We can even go even further. So I'm just going to open the uh, picks our dirt up in the attribute editor here um, and we'll have a look at a couple of the other options that we've got so if I run another IPR now and increase the cosine spread to 1.5 pay attention to what, to what happens underneath his body there so essentially it looks like it's pulling the um, pulling the shadows out a little bit more um, and that's essentially what the cosine spread is referring to and you can invert that 2.5 or lower if you want or you could go higher than 1.5 if you wish and um, this is going to create even more deep it's going to sort of suck the shadows in but spread them out a little bit as well as you can see so I'll set that cosine spread back to 1.0 the next thing you've got is fall off uh, so essentially this is how the the darkness will gradiate away from any of the occluded areas so if I increase that uh, to 1.0 you see it gets a lot lighter uh, compared to this the standard occlusion and inversely it will get a lot darker if I decrease the spread or put it set it to negative one uh, max distance isn't going to be super useful in this example um, because you generally use it for um, spreading the dirt color around so um, not super important if you're just using it for ambient occlusion uh, and direction is not really either essentially direction you can use it to if you set it to inside it's going to invert the ambient occlusion um, but then obviously you can counteract that by setting the occluded area to be white and the unoccluded area to be black 
and then both is going to balance both out. So generally, if you're just looking for ambient occlusion, you're going to set it to outside. And finally, you've got bias normals, and this is actually probably the most useful um, one of these uh, inputs. So what you can do if you have a normal map is you can run the result n into the bias normal. So that's going to look at your normal map um, and use that to increase the amount of detail. So if you just look at the standard render versus with the bias normals on, you can see how much more darkness you're getting in areas um, like particularly along here. You can see this extra bit of sculpting that I did there and in any of the other areas as well. So if you've got a model with a lot of detail like this, it can be, it can help quite a lot. And um, this model was about 5 million polys um, with a 4K displacement map. So it does have quite a bit of detail. Um, so if I stop that and then I, all right, so I'm sorry, I jiggled the camera there because if my wasn't responding, so it's gonna zoom in and out a little bit. But um, you can see that, um, the detail like on the shoulder there and like through here is quite intense uh, with the um, with the bias normals on and then it sort of normalizes quite a lot more with it off so if you're looking for that extra bit of contrast uh, using the bias normals from your normal map can be a good way to go and finally if you're using bias normals uh, and you and you like the extra detail but you want to just back it off a little bit have a little bit of control you can actually use your alpha in your pixar blend node which is this one here um, and just reduce the alpha of the top alpha now you'll lose contrast as you do this but um, if you just want to back off overall that's a good way of doing it you can also try changing the operation uh, to something like an overlay for example so then that way you'll get a, a lot more whites as well as your darks uh, but I'll leave that up to you to experiment with and if you are using a texture Mac instead of using the bottom color like I have there, you just run your Pixar texture into that, just using the RGB out into the bottom RGB, um, or a ramp or whatever you're using it for your color, uh, and they'll work the exact same as you would uh, if you're plugging it straight into your diffuse color. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it, and um, hopefully you guys found this one useful and you're able to use it on some of your models to get a little bit of extra detail out of them. Um, if you did find it useful, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials every week for things like RenderMan and other CG products. If you'd like to stay up to date um, even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.